Hey, I'm Kate from DailyTarotGirl.com and in this video I'm going to be taking you on a journey with me. We're going to be doing a deep dive into one tarot card, The Fool. So we're going to be beginning with the very first deck or the very first card in a tarot deck. The first card in the Major Arcana which is number zero, The Fool. So we're going to dive into this card. I'm going to tell you what this card is all about. I'm going to point out some key symbols that are really important. And I'm going to come up with three main themes of this card. We're going to explore each of these themes. And the whole point of this is to really get to know this card, to really dive into it, and to connect the, the symbols and the themes and the meanings of this card with your own life so that you have a real personal understanding of the Fool. So let's get started. You might want to grab a notebook or a piece of paper and a pen as you watch because I'm going to be giving you lots of questions to, to contemplate and journal about. So make yourself comfortable and let's dive in. So the Fool is the very first card and he isn't number one, he is number zero. And number zero is really one of the key symbols with this card. And I see that zero as symbolizing unrealized potential. So it's what is, you know, the possibilities that have, have yet to be discovered. I think of that zero as being kind of like a portal into, you know, possibilities. So the Fool is all about new beginnings and fresh starts. He is optimistic. He has this sunshiny attitude. He loves to take a risk and take a chance on life. He has kind of that youthful sort of excitement and lust for life. And he is all about discovering possibilities. So some key symbols with this card and the, the card that I'm showing you on the screen right now is from the Universal Weight Tarot. The, the main symbols that you need to be aware of on this card is the number zero, the sun, the cliff edge, the little sack that's on the end of his stick, and another symbol that I think is important is just his whole posture. You know, he kind of seems to be prancing and he has his head held high. He's looking up towards the sky. So like I said, there's going to be three, there's three kind of main themes with this card. So the three themes are new beginnings, trust and optimism, and risk and adventure. So let's start with the first one, which is new beginnings. So the Fool is all about new beginnings and fresh starts. I want you to think of a time in your life where you were enjoying a new beginning or a fresh start. So for me, the, the time in my life that you know comes to mind right away is when I was around 23 or 24 and I had just decided to quit this office job that I'd had for the past three years that wasn't particularly enjoyable or rewarding and I quit that job. I didn't really have a plan. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So I gave myself a month to, to contemplate this. And I decided to go back to school and become a personal fitness trainer. So I signed up for all these courses on, on being a personal trainer. And I just remember that time in my life just being really exciting, being really fun, and just being really excited to kind of leave behind this boring job and embark on this new career. So that was a really exciting time for me. Um, another question to ask yourself is, are there any opportunities for you right now for a new beginning or a fresh start? And this doesn't have to be a major thing. So the Fool isn't always about those major moments in our life where we're starting over. Um, he can also represent sort of little opportunities to see the world with that youthful kind of fresh set of eyes, to try something new, to kind of get out of your comfort zone and, and learn something new. So this could be like 
the opportunity to take a class or, or read a new book or you know learn something new, go to a new place, meet a new person. Um, it could be something uh, smaller. It doesn't always have to be like this big, momentous, life-changing turning point. So are there any opportunities for you now to create you know, maybe a mini fresh start <laughs> or a mini new beginning in your life. Um, okay, so the second theme of The Fool is risk and adventure. The Fool loves an adventure. He's setting out on an adventure and it's impossible to experience an adventure without also taking a few risks along the way. So The Fool is about risk-taking and getting out of your comfort zone and, you know, taking a few risks. So um, a few things help with that. The Fool is, he's packing lightly. If you look at him, he just has that tiny little sack on the end of the stick. He has his dog with him, but he doesn't have a whole bunch of heavy suitcases or a trolley or anything like that. He's packing really lightly and that is really the key. Uh, if you want to start fresh, if you want to feel unburdened, if you want to take a few risks and have some adventures, it helps to pack lightly and, and to not have a whole bunch of baggage with you. So that's kind of like a metaphor. Um, okay, so uh, the cliff edge is a really key symbol here because it shows that he is taking a risk. Now we don't know once he prances off the edge of that cliff, you know, how far down is the drop? Is he gonna land on his face or is he gonna land on his feet? We don't know. <laughs> um, so there is that kind of element of risk. So a question I have for you as we explore this theme is what is your relationship to risk-taking like right now in your life? Are you the kind of person who avoids risk at all costs? Are you okay with taking little risks or does, do even little risks bring a feeling of anxiety for you? Or are you the kind of person who actually seeks out risk? You know, are you on the other end of the spectrum? Do you, you know, feel most alive when you're taking big risks? So what is your relationship like to risk taking? I've noticed myself, um, the older I get, the, the less I'm willing to risk. <laughs> and um, we aren't necessarily talking about risks that put you in danger, but just something that feels a little bit risky. You know, like maybe um, saying what you really think to a friend you know, revealing a part of yourself that you don't normally reveal, those kinds of risks. I'm not talking about, you know, not wearing a seatbelt or, or whatever. <laughs> um, so how often do you go outside of your comfort zone and how far? So when was the last time that you did something that was out of your comfort zone and how far out of your comfort zone was it? I know that uh, when I was in my 20s, I remember being so much more comfortable getting out of my comfort zone than I am now, which probably isn't a good thing, but I am aware of it. <laughs> so I remember when I was uh, like 25, I remember um, I was a belly dancer and uh, I started, had, had the opportunity to belly dance in a restaurant. And I remember when I first heard about that opportunity, um, it just seemed way outside of my comfort zone, like so far out of my comfort zone. But it brought this feeling of excitement and expansiveness. And when I first heard of the opportunity, I was like, yes, I wanna do it. And then I started thinking about it. I'm like, uh, I don't know if I can. I ended up uh, getting outside of my comfort zone and doing it and you know, I learned a lot. It wasn't something that I stuck with. Um, but I learned a lot about myself and I was really proud of myself for, for getting outside of my comfort zone. Um, okay, so one thing I want to clarify here though is the fool, the fool is about challenging yourself to get outside of your comfort zone, but there is a difference between um, getting outside of your comfort zone 
in a way that feels exciting and expansive versus um, a way that doesn't feel good. So, <laughs> so sometimes something will be outside of your comfort zone just because it's a little, like it's something that makes you feel excited and expansive like the dancing did for me. And sometimes something will feel outside of your comfort zone because it isn't in alignment with who you are. And you want to pay attention to that. If something is truly out of alignment with who you are, it's not going to feel good. And you want to listen to that. But if something is in alignment with who you are, but it just seems kind of risky and kind of daring, but it makes you feel excited and expansive, those that's the kind of comfort zone stuff that you want to push. Okay. Um, so what is, is there anything that you have been wanting to try lately, but just haven't? Like, I don't know what, um, like learning a new kind of dance or a new kind of art or telling someone how you feel or something. You know, is there anything that you've been wanting to try for a while, but you just haven't yet because it's a little bit outside of your comfort zone? What mini risk can you take today? So the fool isn't necessarily about grand gestures and big risks and things like that. It's about little risks, little little boundary pushes, you know, little, <laughs> uh, you know, just stepping out of your comfort zone a little bit. Think of some ways that you can do that today. And remember that these um, mini, mini risks should feel expansive and should bring like a little bit of a thrill to you. So um, an example for me would be, um, sharing with a close friend how I feel about a current issue, a current event. Sometimes I shy away from doing that because I worry they might not agree with me and then I may ruin the intimacy between us, um, but I'm going to take a risk and I'm going to share how I feel about something with them. All right, so the next theme of The Fool is trust and optimism. So in order to get outside of our comfort zone and have adventures and take those, those risks, however big or small they might be, that requires a certain amount of trust in life and optimism. So the fool is very optimistic and he has a lot of trust in life. And the dark side of the fool, so every card has a dark side. And the dark side of the fool is being too trusting, too optimistic, to the point of being naive, and too willing to take big risks without really assessing the situation. So that is kind of the dark side of the fool. That's where the fool becomes foolish. He crosses the line between being uh, adventurous and free to just being really foolish. So think, of, think about a time in your life where you were too trusting you're maybe too optimistic and you took risks that were truly, you know, foolish or maybe even dangerous. Uh, that is that is the dark side of the fool operating in your life. So what is your relationship to optimism like? I know myself, um, the last couple of years, I've really struggled to maintain my sense of optimism. Whereas usually I'm a fairly optimistic person and in the last couple of years I've kind of felt like I'm more of a pessimistic person. So that's how my relationship to optimism has changed. But just notice what your relationship to optimism is like. One symbol to notice here on this card is the sun. So that sun, that big, beautiful, glowing golden sun is a symbol of optimism. And his head held high, looking up towards the sky, again, is another symbol of, you know, looking upward uh, and being optimistic. So how true is this statement? I trust in life. So say that statement to yourself. I trust in life. And notice how it feels for you. Notice how true or how untrue that statement feels. Are you able to truly surrender and trust in life and the process of life? 
or do you often find yourself gripped by fear and anxiety? So I had this little epiphany while I was studying this card and preparing the notes for this video because lately I've been feeling anxious and I'm not normally a super anxious person but lately I've been kind of struggling with that a little bit. And I noticed that that anxiety actually indicates kind of a mistrust in life. And so as I was studying The Fool, I kind of had this epiphany that trust in life, um, it doesn't have to mean that you think that everything is going to work out all the time for you and that you're never going to have any struggles because that's totally unrealistic for all of us. Having trust in life means that you believe that you're more than a physical body, you're more than just this experience, you're, you're bigger than that, and that in the end, once it's all said and done, everything will have had a purpose and everything will make sense in the end when you can see the big picture, even if it doesn't make sense right now. So that to me, is my sense of what it means to have trust in life. It doesn't mean believing that everything's gonna work out all the time, because um, of course, it's not always gonna work out all the time, <laughs> indefinitely, um, but that there's a bigger picture at play, and if you have that spiritual connection, you know that there's a deeper meaning to things, and in the end, when you can see the big picture, it will all make sense. Um, so the wisdom of the fool is to really, um, always be able to see the possibilities in life and to be willing to take a chance on life, to take a few risks, to get outside your comfort zone, because that is where the magic happens. That is where the true aliveness and adventure exists. Once we, once we decide to, to be adventurous, to take a few risks and, and look at the world with a fresh, youthful, new set of eyes. So I want to know, did you enjoy this video? Did you learn anything new about yourself or about The Fool? And I would love for you to share with me in the comment section below. I'm going to be posting one video per week. So I'm starting with The Fool. I'm going to work my way through the Major Arcana. So if you like this video, please subscribe because I'm going to be doing The Magician next. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching.